So I have quite a few exciting things to say and a few other things hopefully I don't forget before I have to say them because they're already kind of slowly going out of my brain. So I'm gonna bring up the first thing that I know is going out of my brain right now because I can feel it slipping away. Uh, how I told you guys, I think it was last week or the week before how my car had issues in 2016. Well, <laughs> she's having issues again. Well, not really. Um, we had a lot of rain come to us last week and we we're supposed to get like a lot more in the next two weeks but we had a really big storm occur and um just caused a lot of rain to come down it's like actually this is the first storm that night was the first storm i heard thunder and lightning not heard lightning but saw lightning in a long time i'm from florida that's like casual for me so coming here not seeing that much lightning and thunder it was kind of like weird but i don't really see that much around this area so we had a really big storm I want to say uh, half a week ago for me and the next day when I had to take Zach to work he now regularly works seven to four shifts so I have to get used to waking up at seven to four <laughs> no promises <laughs> um, well when I was driving him I noticed that one of the back tires it's not like the back right tire for me uh, was grinding whenever I was putting on the brakes I was like of course as I mentioned I think my car is gonna explode but not, I actually didn't think that for some reason. I was like, oh, okay, I'm waste. I actually thought logically about it. I was like, oh, it must just be the water and the brake not, you know, go assigning with each other. <laughs> As I would have described it. Plus, it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. I went over at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm really tired, so I don't even worry that much. I don't panic. I kind of was like, whatever. <laughs> Everything. So I asked my dad about it because he used to be a mechanic for a while. Like before, I think before I was born, or during or during time when I was born, somewhere around there, he used to be a mechanic. He knows cars very well, and I talked to him about it because I went to his work that later that day to pick up Zach. Before I picked up Zach, he said, "Well, it could be that, but it also could be that you need new brakes because ever since I purchased my car back in 2016, I haven't got it new brakes. And apparently, from what my dad says, you should get new brakes every couple of years." I don't know why. I don't know anything about cars, but I'm going to believe what he says. <laughs> so that's why I was okay. So I was like, okay. Now, I haven't been hearing the sound yesterday and today. So it's been like a couple days since I, since that happened. I can't, like, I can't remember the exact days. But it's been a couple days. It's probably dried up. And I haven't been noticing the sound. So it, must, it might have just been um, the brakes being wet or the where it touches being wet. Either way, I pay for new brakes. So... I'm going to be getting new brakes for my car. So it's kind of ironic that I was just talking about all these things I had to do for my car. And then that happened. And my dad's just like, just buy them so we can. Yeah, my dad just did say, just go buy it. We're going to buy you new brakes and new new whatever comes with it what comes with. So we have that. I bought uh, new brakes. costing me $170. Luckily, my taxes or Zach's taxes did come through. And we were able to do a lot of things that was really keeping us down last year. We were able to pay off a lot of our credit card. We put $500 away for Tessa just in case she does need that test. We don't think she needs to because she seems to be doing okay now. Um, she was doing me okay before when she was on the other antibiotics, but like, like a month afterwards, she peed on the floor again. So it's just like we're keeping it in there just in, we're keeping the $500 in our credit card just in case. So we were able to do a lot of things that we needed to do. Um, I still need to get new contacts, um, which will happen eventually. Um, I got paid actually this, this month, which was a surprise because I haven't paid from YouTube in like three months. Because I haven't making, been making enough money on YouTube to be uh, getting paid. I have, you have to reach a $100 threshold to get paid by AdSense, just so you guys who doesn't who don't know. So I got paid, let's see, I was getting about $39 to $40 for the last three months. So it took about three months before I got paid. So that's how it happens, by the way. I finally got paid. So we had a little extra money. Now we're like, I put a lot more into my credit card again. Now it's near halfway paid off. And I uh, next good news I have to tell you guys, I do have a Patreon for anyone who does not know and would like to support my channel. I'm not good at keeping up with my Patreon, so don't like hey say like hey girl, you know you need to be you know doing this stuff. I'm not good at it. 
I'm trying to figure it out. My problem with Patreon is when I put my videos up to be scheduled, be put up, it shows a dot 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 when it is put up. So a lot of people think that the videos are not up. They are up for some reason the thumbnail doesn't pop up. I have to re-put in the uh, address to the YouTube video to get it to pop up after it's already up. It's weird. Um, I don't know how to schedule it where I can post it before YouTube posts it up. I think I have to have it in private or something like that on YouTube. But I, if I do that, I won't remember to put it up on the scheduled day or time for YouTube, if you understand what I'm saying. But either way, I do have Patreon. I'm trying to keep up with it. I do have Patreons on my Patreon page. Is it Patreons? Patreons? It's spelled differently, but I feel like I'm pronouncing it wrong. Anyway, um... I do have people who donate money to me uh, for my channel, my makeup channel, and for my Between Monsters and Man channel. And because of you guys supporting my channel, I was capable of actually saving up enough money to get 23andMe. For anyone who doesn't know what 23andMe is, uh, you get your like saliva tested and you can see what DNA or where your, where your uh, ancestry is from, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Not like linked to people, but linked to where your, your ethnicity, that's what it's called, comes from. This is a big, big thing for me. Why I say this is because my dad and I haven't known our full ethnicity since the day we've both been born. <laughs> he hasn't known his full, I haven't known my full. My mom doesn't even know her full anymore. She thought she was 100% German up until recently when her brother had done an ancestry thing and it said something else. Like he was not 100% and that they're actually mixed blood. My dad's side of the family, um, because of how our ancestors came to America, sorry for the lighting, it's just all bad right now. How our ancestors came to America, we weren't able to trace our ancestors to where we originally were from. When they came and they wrote down their names, the judge wasn't able to re read the name properly. So he just made a new name for them. And it was Baker, that's the new name they gave us. But my dad thinks that our real name may, may have been Baylor or something like that. Um, because it's, I guess when you're writing cursive, it's the clo more closer to what it looks like. I don't know how he got to that point, but that's what he thinks. And apparently from what my dad says, Baylor is a Russian name. That's what he said. Don't quote me on that. He does know that we do have Polish, Russian Jews in our family, but that's as far back as we can go. Um, we knew that we had ancestors from the concentration camps during World War II because uh, they survived. My dad was able to see them before they passed and saw the serial numbers and never the not serial numbers. Yeah, the tattoo numbers. I think they're called serial numbers. It's been a while since I studied World War II. Well, we other than what we know is what my grandma said, and she said that she's half Scottish, half English. Um, that her ancestry is mixed between both Sir Walter Raleigh and Sir Walter Scott. That's what she said. Um, she said Sir Walter Raleigh, but we also found. Uh, the emblem that Sir Walter Scott had in her house, the actual coat of arms, um, and had Scott written on the back and everything like that. So we just assume that, we guess we have that in ancestry too. Because who just has that sitting around their house? So she says she was half Scottish, half English, which makes sense for the Sir Walter Scott since he was originally from Scotland and came to England. And um, could just be weird. And we do have ancestors in Scotland too, so. So, sorry for the little comments, this lighting sucks. So what I'm trying to say is, I was able to 423 me. I have to wait for it to come. I just purchased it today, so today's Sunday and you guys will get this video on Wednesday. It's gonna probably take a couple weeks to get here. I'll do a small little, hey, I got it video. So I'll do that and then when it comes in, I'll continue the video, etc., etc. So I'm really excited for it. Now, the reason why we question our ethnicity on my dad's side is because my dad's dad's side is the one we have no idea about. We don't really know anything about it except for that we had Polish Jews, Polish Russian Jews on that side of the family. That's all that we know about it. We don't know anything else. So we were really, my dad and I have been always wanting to know. We've tried ancestry, trying to li line up our, not like DNA, the ancestry line up, trying to figure out where our families come from. And it's a big question mark because we didn't know what our real last name was. And it was just, we're really clueless about it. We've been wanting to look for answers. So I'm just doing the ethnicity one because that's all I can afford. Um, and 
with you guys' help, I was able to finally, I'm able to finally go back to subscribing to Japan Crate, which is a Japanese candy crate I can now do videos on again, and Birch Box, which I can now do videos on again uh, via. Now I just heard the grinding. So yeah, I'm still getting the grinding, so I do need new bricks. <clears throat> So I'm able to film more videos for you guys now. Of course, they're box opening videos. If anyone does not care about that, I am sorry. But they helped me f get back on to doing videos again. I was able to put makeup on, film the makeup. And it helped me get more, <laughs> more, uh, what's the word? It made me feel like I needed to do it more, which is good. Because like nowadays, I'm like, I don't know what I should film. I don't know what makeup to do. I'm questioning myself a lot because of everything that's going on. But these boxes will basically enforce me to do videos. So that's good. You know, it won't be just box opening videos. It'll be more videos. Like I'll put my makeup on, film my makeup. If I finally have more things I could talk about with my mental illness, which I do have uh, about three or four more videos. I have filmed and edited, not edited yet, sorry. I have filmed, will be edited soon and continue being put up and they do talk about my mental illnesses. So, um, I do have more videos coming. I'm sorry that it's going back and forth. I'm tr I've tried to do that before with the makeup and mental, etc. So, I will have more videos up for you guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Uh, this means so much to me because for such a long time, we, like I said in 2016, we basically lost our house. We can hardly pay for rent, etc. And you guys who support my channel, I don't want to use your guys' money and buy, you know, uh, put it to anything bad. I want to use it for either making sure I can still live or making sure I can bring content to these channels. And that's what I'm going to do. The 23 Me, I'm going to do a video on it. Because I know a lot of you guys are wondering what my ethnicity is. I am only going to use your guys' money if you guys do send me money through PayPal or Patreon. On stuff that needs to be done for feeding my pets, feeding me, or for the content of my channel. And it's, I'm going to try my best not to use it for anything but the content of my videos. Because that's what I believe in like if I'm using it for between monsters and men I want to get stuff for between monsters and men like it's if there's scary boxes I know there's horror boxes out there horror subscriber boxes I would like to do that for between monsters and men. I think that'd be pretty cool because I know a lot of times people are wondering what I look like in between monsters and men because they don't watch my makeup channel so <laughs> it'd be nice to be able to do that one day my makeup channel I'll do makeup stuff uh, Japan crate craft stuff uh if there was a mental health box, I don't know what it would look like, but I would totally do it. So hopefully the funds can go to a mental health situation. Like sometimes these subscriber boxes do donate. I think some do donate to the causes. Um, I would love to do that. Um, maybe in the future, if I ever get enough subscribers, I'll start putting percentages into a foundation for mental health because my makeup channel is also with mental health videos. So I feel like I need to participate in that. If I ever make enough where I can do that, I would definitely do it. I just gotta look up which ones I want. I know there's ones for schizophrenia by themselves. I'm pretty sure there is. Because I've been seeing... I haven't been seeing commercials for fundraisers. But I've been seeing commercials for uh, testings. They're like Because I live next to Atlanta. You get commercials about, if you're schizophrenic, come to this location. You could be try, try to try out these medications. I've been seeing those a lot lately. I've been seeing a medication. I want to say it's Invega, but I could be completely wrong. You, that's for schizophrenics. So it's not fun, 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 foundations, fun, fundraisers. I'm just getting the mix up in my brain right now. <laughs> but I would love to do that. But I want to support more than just schizophrenia. I want to support. There's not that much information on borderline either. A lot of psychiatrists don't like to work with people with borderline personality disorder because of how they act and respond and they can be a little bit manipulative. Kind of like psychopaths. They're not psychopaths. We're not psychopaths. I'm just saying they have some traits that kind of spook psychiatrists out because we can be a little hard to handle. <laughs> I know I can be extremely hard to handle. Zach has a real hard time with me. But since I've been on the Lamotrogen, it's been a lot more easier, but I've been still having some episodes here and there. Anyway, um... One, you guys know that I would like to do that one day in the future. Um, when, when I'm capable enough to do it, uh, I want to make sure I'm in the right mind frame, taken care of before I start sending money out to help others. And uh, I don't think that's selfish, but I'm trying to 
take care of me first, obviously. Because it would just be weird. It's like giving homeless food, homeless people food when you don't even have enough food to feed your pets, children, or yourself. If that makes any sense. I would love to help people. You know what? That actually, I want to bring that up. Real quick, since it's been 17 minutes, this is going to be a long vlog video again. I'm, I was watching this 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 Netflix series. I love this series. Don't get me wrong, but something irks me a lot about this series. I hate wasting anything. When I have to throw something away. It it irks me. I don't like it. If I can recycle something, I would recycle. I'm watching this. I was watching the show. I finished it called Bring Your Sexy Back, and it's Australian, uh, kind of like uh, I can't remember the name of the one that used to play in America, where. You, you over obese people would go on and they get trained by Jillian and that one guy to lose weight in a certain amount of weeks and if they do they win prizes and they get healthy again and you learn how to get healthy again they talk about the processes those type of sh I love watching those sh type of shows because I feel so motivated and a lot of times I get teary eyed at the end because I'm like I'm so happy for them I get like that <laughs> I, get, I start almost crying for them I'm like I'm so happy for you you lost so much weight I get really excited about it so I like watching those shows because I get really happy at the end but then I feel like I have to go work out myself um well I was watching an Australian one called bring sexy back and he goes in and he takes all, all the bad food other than our houses, which is great. You should do that. Take out the bad food. Eat good food. It's good for you, especially if you have a hard time losing weight. But he just threw it away. He threw away all the food. He took them in garbage bags, and he didn't say, we're going to donate it anywhere. You know, he said, legitimately, he said, we're going to throw these away. Take all these pizza boxes, these unopened sodas, all these unopened bags of potato chips, all these other snacks you're supposed to eat, all these frozen foods. And he legitimately said he was throwing them away. I'm like, what? And he would take huge garbage bags of these foods and say that. I'm like, what? Are, donate them. Take them to fund fundraisers where you could give people. There's people all around the world. You could probably send those to third world countries or something. I don't know. But maybe you can. But you should try. At least try. I'm sure there's homeless people in Australia. Donate food to them. What? Uh, that blew my mind and that's the only thing that really ticked me off when I was watching the entire show every time he went into the refrigerator now we gotta throw away all these foods put them in the garbage I'm like you're killing me you're killing me right now why are you throwing away those food go donate to somewhere please so it's a great show gets you a little motivated but it pissed me off so much right now I was like what throwing away food <laughs> Now, I'm not saying you should eat them, but there's people out there that are starving who could use those bad carbs and sugars to help them gain the weight that they need to be healthy. I don't care. Should be feeding the people who can't eat. What is wrong with you? <sighs> and the reason why I think it extra ticks me off is because we were living, my family, I'll admit, wasn't we weren't middle class we were lower class um my parents worked really hard to get us what we wanted when we were little they would have to go to those um special stores i don't even remember what they're called I, I was really little when they did they had to go to those special stores that basically donate toys for kids and we had to do that a lot we had a, they had to do it for thanksgiving at one point my mom and dad said yeah we had to go to those type of stores and they donate turkeys for you for thanksgiving and everything so you could have a thanks i don't remember where they were at I just remember my mom and dad mentioning them. I don't know if, know anything about them, but I remember them mentioning it to me because we lived really lowly. My dad worked for waste management um, for a long time. He worked other jobs before I was born. The only reason why I became privileged, like what I got now, and I'll be honest, it wasn't because of my, my mom and dad. It wasn't because of me. It's because I dated my girlfriend um, for, she. I was with her for 11 years since I was in... 11th grade, I want to say 11th grade, but I knew her since 9th grade, and <clears throat> she spoiled the crap out of me. I didn't ask for anything, really. She just spoiled me. She spoiled me a lot. She would buy me video game consoles because she knew that video games help uh, keep the voices down in my head. They help my mood disorders a lot. So she would buy me video game consoles because I only had, at the time when she started dating me, was a PS2, a GameCube. We had the older systems. <clears throat> She started buying me the newer systems, like the Xbox 360 at the time, um, and all of that. 
and she bought me all these games because she knew that would help keep the voices calm a little bit. Not calm, but they quieted down a little bit. For me, it helped me. And it helped my anger calm down because when I would get aggressively angry, it would snap like nothing. It was I had a lot of severe, severe issues when I was a teenager. Um, she helped, though, by doing that stuff. She would buy me anime figurines, DVDs. She would buy me a whole bunch of stuff. She was just one of those type of girls that when she's in a relationship, she's in another relationship now. We're not together anymore, but we're still best friends. She's one of those girls that when she's in a relationship, she puts all of her love into that relationship, and she will literally spend all of her money, her full paycheck, on you without your content. <laughs> she's just one of those girls. And I loved her to death. She was always there for me. She went through hell with me, though, because she was there during my worst episodes. Um, so was Zach. Um, Zach sometimes made them worse when we first started dating. Why she went through it worse than Zach was because she was there when it first started kicking in for me. Like, when I was about 15, 16, she saw it firsthand when all of a sudden I started hearing things, started seeing things from the depression, started kicking in, and I didn't know what was going on. And, um, I started studying into it because I wanted to know what was wrong with me, how I could handle the situation. Obviously, you can't really do anything. So she was there through the entire thing for me. She got... She got beaten by my schizophrenia and my borderline. It was terrible. And I apologized to her almost every single day because of it. Because there was nothing we could do at the time. We didn't know what was wrong with me. And then when I finally went to a psychologist back in 2009. Yes. Because, yeah, it was my senior year when that happened. When I went to a psychologist in 2009, he diagnosed me with paranoia schizophrenia. Paranoid schizophrenia. Um, he didn't diagnose me with a mood disorder. I didn't stay with him long because um, I stayed with him for about five months. And he heightened the bill and my parents couldn't pay it for it anymore. So I had to leave. And um, then I went back to seeing a therapist and a psychiatrist back in 2015. Because um, my ex-girlfriend couldn't afford to get me to a psychiatrist. So she could spend all this other money on me. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask her to do it at the same time. Because we weren't married. I wasn't going to like, I'm going to, hey, I need to pay for my psychiatrist. I just felt wrong about asking for that, if that makes any sense. Um, but I was also causing issues because of my issues. And then I got a relationship with Zach, who said, no, I'm, well, if we ever had the money, we were going to get you into a psychiatrist. So when he finally got a job, which I actually had to enforce, I had to get him to get him a job. I had to force him to get a job because the job he was working with was getting him no stability. No, no money was, he would get paid $100 maybe once a month. And it's like, you're not going to live off of that. So I got him to go to work at Walmart and then we were able to afford me to go to a psychiatrist and a ther therapist. And the psychiatrist and the therapist said I might have, the psychiatrist didn't give me an indefinite answer. She never did. She never really talked to me. I talked about her, my doctor experiences. She just didn't. She was a terrible doctor, but she sent me to a therapist who said that sounds like a lot like schizophrenia with borderline personality disorder, at which I thought I did have mood disorder with my schizophrenia and I started believing it was bipolar, but I wasn't diagnosed with bipolar. I just was assuming it was bipolar because the way it sounded like with my, my, my anger and depression and my happiness mood swings. Um, but she said, it sounds like it's schizophrenia with borderline and that's, uh, that's when I had to stop seeing my psychiatrist. And when I stopped seeing my psychiatrist, I stopped seeing my therapist. Don't know why I fully stopped seeing my therapist. She actually did a halfway decent job. But I think it was because the area that she was in, it was it was really terrible area. It was in the slums of where we lived. She was uh, working out of a house rented to someone, but has a small office in the house. And um, she made us wait an hour before she took us in. So it's kind of like, okay thank you for your information and it did sound extremely accurate i wasn't going to deny her she she did sound extremely credible i just didn't like the area and i didn't feel comfortable going to a therapist and not getting the proper medication with my psychiatrist at the same time if i was going to see a therapist and a psychiatrist i'd rather do it at the same time or see the psychiatrist more so i can get the medication to take care of my issues i stopped seeing her too until um Last year, I started seeing the psychiatrist again, which she just she diagnosed me first with schizophrenia, with possible mood disorders. Um, the mood disorders, or bipolar, or borderline, or both somehow. <laughs> um, and now she's diagnosed me with schizoaffective disorder, with again potential bipolar or borderline. I'm still saying it's borderline because the way I've been 
taught about borderline now sounds more like my mood disorders do which i i my mood disorders swings are very quick and they're extremely aggressive and i have an extreme possession possessive problem and that links to a lot with borderline i don't know how i got on this topic but yes, um, the reason why, oh, now I remember, the reason why I was privileged was because of her. So a lot of the stuff that I have now is all from her, and it's, and it's she was a blessing in my life. She, like, it's just my best friend. She's dating someone else now who seems really nice. Haven't met her for very long. I got to meet her for, like, three days when I visited her last year. She seems okay. I'm gonna be judgmental because, you know, she's my ex-girlfriend. I'm gonna be protective of her. This past year, I've been having a lot of issues. Well, ever, actually, ever since 2016, we've been having issues. So because of you guys, I'm finally able to do some of the things that I haven't been able to do for years, like the Jap Japanese crate and the birch box, which will help me bring content to this channel. I really appreciate that. If anyone else wants to support my Patreon or support this channel, go on ahead and click below. You'll find it in the description. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a good day.